Hey guys, Josh here from Sportitude, and today we're going to be doing a foot type video. So what we want to do is basically give you some information at home to help you identify what foot type you might be, and then lead you into what shoes you should be selecting. So technically, there are three foot types. There's an overpronated foot type, there's a neutral foot type, and there is an underpronated or supernated foot type as the third. So today's review, we're gonna go through those three foot types, give you the information you need at home to make your shoe selection just that bit easier. So we'll start off with the overpronated foot type first up. Now the reason we're gonna start off with that is because it is on average the majority of runners out there. So the data that we get year in, year out suggests that around 65 to 70% of runners have a tendency to favor that medial side or overpronate. So what that looks like is, got my little foot in my hand through here. So in a static position, if this foot was on a flat surface, you'll see that the arch is a little bit closer to the ground on that medial side. And when this runner makes contact with the ground, be it heel first or midfoot to forefoot, there will be a transition from that lateral compression side on entry through to the medial side through mid stance where the arch will collapse and then the foot will roll over to that medial side as it gets ready to then transition to toe off out of the gate cycle. Now with an overpronated foot type, what we tend to do is we look for shoes that have some form of medial support on the instep. So traditionally speaking, if we went back a number of years now, we've been looking at shoes that have some form of dual density or tri-density foam on that medial side. However, brands are ever so slightly changing the way they look at support systems. So guide rails, blended support systems, or some form of arch um, cradle or support on that medial side will cater for that overpronated foot type. The other thing we keep in mind as well, while I did talk about a foot type in a static position, a good running shoe shop like us downstairs will actually measure you through um, weight bearing. So looking at you walking and running through that whole transition because how a foot looks in a static position can be a lot different to how it looks when it is weight bearing as well, which is vitally important. So when you'd walk into your favorite running store 10 years ago, it would almost be as if you were walking to a T-junction. So you get to an intersection and the salesperson would identify what foot type you were. You'd go left if you happened to supinate or you'd go right if you happen to pronate. And that's kind of how shoe walls used to be laid out as well. So there'd be your supportive shoe section, your under support or under pronating slash supinated shoe section and neutral which would sit in the middle. Today, fast forward to where we are in 2022, there is a lot of shoes that sit in that middle. And therefore, it's really important to know that specific foot types can run in a couple of different varieties of shoes. So as we touched on with the overpronated foot type that does collapse in that arch area, there are a lot of neutral runners out there that have a static position that looks very similar to an overpronated foot type. And when you have that static position that sits on a flat surface like this, this runner, when they come through their mid stance transition, from heel to mid stance, you won't see as much of a favor, um, favoritism towards that medial side. A lot of the pressure will be the cent through the central part of the foot as it gets ready to transition through to the forefoot to then toe off. That being said, it's important to know that there are some neutral foot types that look something similar to this in that static position as well. So there'll be quite a bit of space between the arch and the ground. However, the same thing occurs when this runner goes through mid stance. So when they make contact with the ground, again, be it heel or midfoot, the pressure will still be through the central part of that foot. However, they will still see a little bit of that real estate, the arch will stay nice and pitched, or high and pitched, I shouldn't say nice and pitched, high and pitched through mid stance before that foot then gets ready to toe off out of the gate cycle. So when we're talking about that neutral category, again, just like the terminology itself, neutral means consistent basically. No real tendency to favor that medial or lateral side very consistent pressure through the central part of the foot. So therefore, when brands execute neutral shoes, they don't want to be too heavy, heavily biased between so that medial side or that lateral side to then interfere with the foot's natural motion or natural movement pattern. And then we come to the last but not least foot type. Now, the reason I've left the supinated foot type to the end of this review is because it's technically the minority of runners out there. So we tend to Again, the data which we touched on early was around 65 to 70% of runners do overpronate. Uh, however, it's we're finding less than 10% of runners happen to supinate. Now, what that means is when this runner comes down and makes contact with the ground, be it again heel, midfoot or forefoot, the pressure will tend to be on that lateral side of their gait. So again, when this runner hits the ground, comes through to mid stance, we'll see this foot type to sit up quite high, 
quite a bit of space between their arch and the ground and the pressure to be on the lateral side of the shoe itself before the foot gets ready to then toe off. And generally speaking, this foot type will toe off more often than not, potentially from your third metatarsal and across. So why is it important for brands to still execute shoes for the minority runners out there? Well, it's still very important because they need to have some form of engineering components that are gonna help assist these runners to be comfortable and again, assist these runners on their natural plane of movement. So what brands have done, again, if we went back 10 years ago, we would see brands provide a lot of flexibility through the forefoot. Nothing has really changed with regards to how supernators find themselves into a running shoe today. It'll be a neutral shoe. However, the geometry of the foam and also the flexibility through, through that forefoot is going to dictate how a supernated foot would sit inside a running shoe and how it would perform through its whole transition. Now, the other thing that's important to know as well. If a runner did happen to have a lot of arch support underneath the medial side and they are a supernatural foot type, technically speaking to the rule of the book, we would say that's not a good fit. However, there's still a percentage of runners out there that may just be how they've been running in running shoes for a number of years. Now, the important thing to know, there are always going to be exceptions to the rule. So what I mean by that is, for example, you have a super natural foot type like this, a runner that has been potentially using a supportive shoe for a number of years and has been absolutely fine. So why would you go and take that person out of a supportive shoe and put them into a neutral shoe because essentially the guidelines suggest they should be in a neutral shoe. Well, again, as I touched on, there are always um, examples to that rule. And the same thing goes for a overpronated foot type. If you have an overpronated foot type that has been using a neutral shoe for a number of years and that runner has been A-OK, -okay, there's been no injuries, no soreness, no concerns for change, well, you'd still keep them in a neutral shoe. But the other discussion point here is, which we do sometimes touch on in our shoe reviews, are orthotics. And the same thing goes, the same conversation goes with orthotics as well. Because again, generally speaking, we will put an orthotic inside a neutral shoe and keep some of the characteristics that this podiatrist would require to make sure that this person can move with pain or less pain and injury free through their entire gait cycle. So if there is a runner out there that's been using orthotics inside a supportive shoe and it's been A-OK, -okay, that is nothing wrong with that, it's totally fine. Still stick with it, um, obviously seek advice with your podiatrist. I always recommend if you've got an orthotic, you should be getting them reviewed every 12 months on average. Of course, that's case by case, but if you had an orthotic for a few years, it would certainly be worth going back to your podiatrist and having a conversation about what that orthotic is doing for you. Now, again, these are just guidelines. I've said that a few times now, and if you are a runner that is experiencing some discomfort, some soreness in a prescribed shoe that is technically supposed to work for your movement pattern, I would encourage you to go get yourself clinically assessed be it with your podiatrist or a physiotherapist, whoever it is, someone that has the ability to diagnose why you're getting sore and help prescribe a path back to good health for yourself so you can keep running and remain fit and healthy for the remainder of your training days. Okay guys, in summary, there are three foot types out there. So we have overpronated foot type, which makes up for the majority of runners, again, 65 to 70% of runners. There are neutral foot types out there that don't have a tendency to favor either the medial or the lateral side. And then there is your underpronated or otherly known as supernated foot types where the pressure is on the lateral side of the foot as it transitions through the gait cycle. Now it's important to know when you do go into your favorite shoe shop, you should make sure that you are being measured and assessed while you are moving in the shoe and especially moving in the activity that they're intended for. So if you just put your foot into a shoe and stand there, have a little light walk around the shop, it's not gonna give you any indication how it's gonna perform at a running or all four runnings essentially. So jump up in the treadmill, fingers crossed the store has a treadmill, you can have a jog, get that video, have a discussion and talk to the fitter about how the shoe performs for you. Comfort is still key, you gotta make sure that you're nice and comfortable within your running shoes. But always remember there are exceptions to this rule. And if you happen to be in a specific design of running shoe and it's working for you, stick with it. However, if you've been prescribed a specific running shoe and you're trying to get over an injury or a soreness and things still continue to be sore or new little injuries or sorenesses pop up, we would encourage you to go and have a conversation with a clinician, podiatrist, physiotherapist, whoever it is that can diagnose where your discomfort is coming from and help prescribe you back to good health. So thanks for watching guys and we look forward to taking care of your next shoe needs. See you on the road, take care.